<laughs> okay, dude, you ready? I know words, I have the best words. India, for me, was a really naturally ego-obliterating place. You got to witness what humans have to go through, the reality of what most people on this planet have to deal with. A lot of us in the West, we live in this bubble of comfort, and we're really disconnected from what's actually going on in the world. There's trash everywhere and poverty, but equally spirituality and hospitality. It's like a pile of coal. You know, it's on the, on, on the surface it seems a little rough around the edges, but if you if you can dig through and you can clean it up a little bit, you will find diamonds. Is that a, that's that might have been a little bit of a cheesy cliche metaphor, but it's true. India is a diamond. There's so much to see and so much to learn. You just got to be willing to get your hands a little dirty. So I had heavy expectations going to India by myself, you know, from friends that have went to what I've read online. I never thought that I liked Indian food, so I was like, oh, fuck, shit, I'm gonna have to spend the next month and a half in India eating food I'm not particularly fond of. And Delhi Belly, I don't know if you guys know what Delhi Belly is, but all my friends that have been to India were like, just accept it, man, you're gonna get sick, and you're gonna probably diarrhea. My, my, my best friend Mark, he was like, just prepare yourself, you're gonna shit yourself. Like, fuck, that's a, that's a scary thing to have to prepare for. But I actually didn't get sick once. I got, I puked right when I first got there, like the second day or something like that, but it was more because of exhaustion of traveling. I was traveling nonstop for like 30 hours straight, and my appetite was kind of a little wacky, and I was jet lagged. But other than that, I didn't get sick from any food. And like Kenshi, the temple I was staying at, Kenshi, the, temp the temple where Ram Dass met, Neem Karoli Baba. I was blessed to be able to stay there for a week with Raghu Marcus, Krishna Das, Rameshwar Das, Mohan, Dr. Rick, Lucian, these people you've been seeing in my vlogs. And then we went to the to the jungle ashram and hung out with the jungle baba and oh, god damn the food. Oh god guys, this food. This oh I crave it every day since I don't know what kind of magic these temples are sprinkling in their food, but Moy Bien. Muy bien. Some people definitely want to rip you off. This is something you need to be aware of when you're traveling the world, especially somewhere like India, especially somewhere like India by yourself. Because I have friends that sort of gave me a heads up, I had my guard up about this right off the bat. You know, you can see my sort of insecurities about it in the first vlog, especially about being overcharged. I didn't want to be overcharged for anything because I don't, I don't know, you know, I'm coming here, they could charge me anything. And, uh,. So I was really worried about that. But after being in India for a while, I didn't get the impression that anyone wanted to truly rip you off in, in like a malicious kind of way. It's just a poor country and these it's sort of a bargaining system. Be stern and confident, bargain with them and you can get a fair price. And if you don't like it, if you feel like you are getting ripped off, then just go to the next person. Just head to the next person and you'll be okay. You'll, you'll eventually, if you, if you try, you'll find absolutely a fair a fair price. You know, it might take you three times, but you can get a really good deal on whatever you want to do. Travel, buying gifts, or, uh, you know, anything. Worst case is you pay $10 instead of $5 for whatever it is, and it's still cheaper than the $20 you would have paid at home for it. After a while, even if I did pay a little bit more for something, like when I went to Milana and I bought hash from the Milana people, I got ripped off a little bit, but I didn't, you know, it's cheaper than what I would get it at home for, and it's, you know, it's the experience. These people are, it's priceless. You know, if I have to pay 10 extra dollars for something, like, and it, and it makes this person's, you know, this it helps this person out on a pretty significant level, you know, compared to, to what $10 does for me. Who gives a shit, you know? This is it's part of the experience, I think. And it's part of us leaving our culture and going into their culture. It's, it's, I think it's not that we're obligated to give them money, but it's nice and it's respectful. And we shouldn't take it so serious in the way that I was taking it when I first went there. 
but always bargain. This became a game for me right off the bat. Right off the bat, I was in every single store, just like, oh, how much is this? Just kind of gathering information. How much is this? How much is this? So then you get you get a sort of database of of knowledge of, okay, this is worth this much, this is worth this much. You can learn the best deals and kind of gauge what things are actually worth. Because for me, being on a budget was important. It didn't work out quite the way I wanted to. And I, I did, I did, was on a budget. I was, I did do good, but you know, I would have liked to have done a little bit better. But, you know, trying was, I tried. <laughs> One thing that I got shit for in my first vlog, no pun intended, was that Indians don't use toilet paper because it's a privilege, because it'll clog their drains. This is what was my impression that these poor countries, like I went to Costa Rica and they don't, they say no toilet paper. And if you do use toilet paper, put it in the bin, don't flush it down the toilet because it'll clog the drains. India, they have signs in the bathroom that say the same thing. So in my privileged head, I was like, oh, they don't use toilet paper because it'll fuck the drains all up and it'll ruin everything. So therefore, it is a privilege that we are able to use toilet paper because in India, they just use water, you know? And so many Indians were like, you idiot. So yeah, that's something I learned is that they use water and I, I miss it a little bit. I don't know if that's weird, but they have these jets. <laughs> so that's something I learned. Oh, oh, you can really see my ego shining through in these in these India vlogs, especially the first ones. But as the sort of backpacking through India alone series went on, you can see my heart kind of start to open up a little bit. After spending time with Sidhima and the Jungle Baba and Raghu and Krishna Das and Lucian and all of the people I hung out with, all of the experiences I had, how could how could my heart not open on, on a little bit? Yet? If being in India has shown me anything truly, like if I if there is anything I can be honest with myself, taking away from this experience of being in India for a month and a half by myself, is that my spiritual practice before I went to India, it was really exposed to me as being superficial. Superficial is Superficial is not, not quite the right word because it is genuine. This is, this is who I am. Like I am, I'm very sincere in, in my seeking, you know, for truth. And, but what it, what it did was show me that my sadhana, my spiritual practice had the depth of a decaying puddle. Not to demean my path because it's my life. But it just showed me how much work I have to do and like how how just lost in the sauce that I can get. Which is good, which is why I went to India. I wanted this reflection of myself shown to me that, hey, you don't gotta figure it out. You have a lot of a lot of work to do. You can go deeper. you 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 do have progress to be made. Rewatching those videos for me is like nails on chalkboard. Like I can't wait to go back. And this is a direction I want to take my channel. This is a little side note, but this is a direction I want to take my channel is becoming more of a travel channel and like doing really interesting, obscure things in these different countries. Like going to this ancient temple and hiking up it and getting a name from a guru and all these kind of things. This is what I would like to do. So whatever, watching those videos is cringy for me, but it's to be expected. It means that I've grown since the experience, which is nice because I can feel it. And I, I, I can I can sense it within myself, this calmness since being home. Other things to be aware of is the pollution. I never understood, you know, when you'd be like on an airplane or walking around a city, why these why people wore these little masks around their face. I never understood it. Like I always thought like, oh maybe they don't want to get sick or something like this. But it's because of pollution. And Delhi, for example, man, the pollution there. Ooh, it's no joke. It'll really mess you up. Like I hung out in Delhi for maybe a week total throughout my trip and every time you know it's just like fuck it. you just get like snot or like just something stuck in the back of your throat in the back of your nose you're constantly like coughing up loogies it's really bad um i never felt unsafe in india traveling by myself you know a majority of the time i was alone i did meet up with some friends and i didn't make a lot of friends but I never felt unsafe. There was never any sort of dodgy experiences where I was like, ah, oh, shit, I probably shouldn't have walked down this alley or I shouldn't have uh, went this way. You know, there were some aggressive moments, 
but I never felt like I couldn't handle myself in those situations. And especially in a place like Rishikesh, where there's where I hung out, there's tons of solo female female travelers and people traveling by themselves. So I think if you want to go to India, if you especially if you're in a popular popular place like Rishikesh or Vrindavan or Delhi or Goa or any of these places, you'll be all right. You know, especially those places, Kasol, the you know some of the places I went to. The biggest culture shock for me wasn't the trash and the poverty. And believe me, those things really do touch a deep place inside of yourself. But the biggest culture shock for me was when I came home. I flew to Toronto before busing home to Detroit in Michigan. And I was hanging out with my friend Andrew. He just got a new place. You know, you can see the CN Tower from his front window in Toronto. And you can there's a mall next to his house. and. It's far out, and I'm really proud of him for getting his life going. So I was like, I'll go to Toronto and hang out with him. So me and Byzanti, we met up, we go to the mall, and I'm just like looking around. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Just looking at these people and these advertisements and these lights and this sort of artificial life that we have kind of created here, and all these people are just aimlessly lurking in the shadows like vampires just waiting to get their fix. They're dressed head to toe in the latest trends and they got bags of blood of items made from China or made from India. Angry at the Chipotle worker for not giving them enough guacamole. Armageddon is here! Armageddon is here and I'm looking around and everyone is unaware. Everyone is unaware. It was like I just came back from a war down the street and none of these people had any idea. And I was like... You're trying to tell me that you've been queued up in this line at this Apple store to get this iPhone while this is going on? This is my initial thought coming back from that part of the world, back to the West. This was more shocking than anything I saw there. But we don't see it here. And, you know, you can argue that's not a bad thing. Good we don't see it here. Good that we live in this privileged bubble. How lucky are we? And we are lucky. And I don't want to take that away from anybody or make anyone feel bad about it. Because, fucking hell, we are lucky people. We have so much opportunity here and so much, so much true blessings. We are blessed to be in the position that we are in. Most of us, not everybody, but most of us are in very good positions compared to most of the world. It's not our fault where we're born. And it's not our fault, the sort of conditions we're raised with, but for those of us that have the capacity to get lost in the sauce and get lost in shopping malls and have bags of whatever, it's time to wake up a little bit. It's time to wake up and time to reconnect with nature and reconnect with the heart of compassion and open ourselves up a little bit and pay attention to what's going on. I think breaking the boundaries of what you're used to. Breaking the comfort zone, leaving home, and traveling to places like this really helps. Anyways, if you want to watch my India vlogs, they're all in the description below and they're all on my YouTube channel. And if you want to support me, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, click subscribe, and I have a t-shirt company called Stay Happy, Stay Weird. This is, this is a new hoodie that's on Stay Happy, Stay Weird, and uh, the link will also be in the description. And if you want, I'll put a little coupon code down there for you. And if you want to support me in a direct way, I have a Patreon. And uh, that, that goes directly into helping me with creative projects, like working on creating a tour. I want to tour around and do spiritual lectures and just hang out and have a satsang. Satsang means a spiritual gathering of friends that are all on this kind of same level. And I want this. I want to I wanna sit around like we're all in a big classroom together. And I want to share our life experiences and try to grow and be reflections for each other. And I've been talking with the people at the Ram Das Foundation, you know, Baba Ram Das. And uh, we're, we're trying to make this happen. So if my Patreon money goes into helping me being able to dedicate time to making that come to life. Ah, so anyways, thanks for watching. Hare Krishna. Om. Shanti, 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 Anand, peace.